Professor Wilkin has already provided some useful concepts and tips for teaching listening. I asked her to give us some more advice about teaching listening. Since listening is such a difficult skill, I think my best advice is to try to find materials and activities that motivate students. They need practice listening to lectures to work on getting the main ideas and details, and it helps if you can find a lecture on the internet on a topic that grabs their attention. A topic like natural disasters, such as tornadoes and hurricanes, is one that I've used often. Since we've all experienced weather events, we are interested in this topic based on how it relates to our own lives and to the lives of people we know. Other motivating topics are based on our students' expressed needs and interests. If the students tell me that they need to prepare for a job interview, I'm going to bring in examples of people introducing themselves and asking questions in an interview for them to listen to. They will be motivated to listen carefully to the way that people interact in this situation because they want to know what to expect to hear from their interviewer so they can plan their responses. I can use the opportunity to teach them specific language choices that mark the interview as a formal register. If they are soccer fans, I can also help them to find soccer news in English. And again, I would teach some of the language choices that speakers make in this register. Students have many different interests that can be used as starting points, and the internet has material for them to listen to. Using the types of materials that students normally or desire to listen to is helpful. If they enjoy podcasts, this is a way that you can practice listening to multiple speakers at one time. Learning to distinguish between the opinions of different people in a conversation is great practice for careful listening. So is listening to different varieties of English that may be featured in podcasts. I try to encourage my students by explaining that the first time they hear a different variety of English, it can be challenging. But after hearing it several times, it becomes more understandable. If they enjoy movies, they can learn to use visual cues as well as audio cues to understand the actors. Teaching them to catch main ideas and details in a film gives them practice understanding main ideas and details in a long, complex story, which can be a challenge. I teach them to read a short summary and review of the movie before watching it to support their top-down processing. Professor Wilkins' advice is to provide students with materials that they are interested in, so they will be motivated to listen carefully to understand the meaning. Students can be taught how to use top-down and bottom-up listening strategies to comprehend information that is important to them. They can be taught to listen for different speech varieties. They can use both audio and visual cues to help them listen. And they can use the internet to get help with the meanings of words, other examples of the expressions they hear, and information to help them with top-down comprehension. These are strategies that can help students listen to many different types of materials.